Well, it's uh, Friday. Uh, let's see, what's the date? Uh, September 30th, 2022. And this is our weekly video. We're going to take a look back, as we always do, and see what's been going on in the auction market, what's coming up, talk about a little bit about a sale, a sales result, uh, but some rank badges. Um, that were at the Christie's online sale that did fabulously well. And it just ended today. And uh, what else is going on? Oh, oh, we did this video um, uh, earlier today. We posted it. We've been working on it. I told you we were working on something a little bit different. And uh, it's about uh, art and how it was treated during the Cultural Revolution. And um, what we decided was uh, it might surprise you. And uh, it's sort of a, a reflective look at uh, how news and information gets spread around the world uh, based on um, largely due to politics, I'm afraid. Um, politics rears its ugly head everywhere. And we talk about that a bit and um, a lot of other things. I think it's a pretty interesting video. And I hope you look at it. Uh, the other thing that's going on, oh, the uh, global member page uh, video for the week has been posted. Uh, let's see here, where is it? Um, it's on the uh, home page. Um, and uh, we, we went through some auction results that were pretty good, I think, uh, during the last week. Uh, a couple of sales did very, very well. And um, we pointed out some of the things that are coming up, and it's over here. Uh, when the page loads, it, there it goes. There it goes, starting to load. And uh, the, as some of you know that use the global pages that are subscribers, um, those videos are all free of ads. There's no ads on them at all. And uh, in it, I talk about a, a really great pair of uh, Japanese uh, lacquered Amari vases that are jars that are coming up to sale um, overseas in, a, in with with very low estimates, six to eight hundred dollars or something, and uh, stuff like that. With in that that those videos, we talk primarily about things that are coming up, things that are going to be on that have been added to the pages over the week. And uh, uh, take a look at it if you're a subscriber. And if you're not a subscriber, give it give it a thought. Just give it some thought. It's a, about a dollar a week to join it. It's pretty cheap, but it's how we pay for the site um, um, and so forth. All right, now uh, let's see what's going on here. Oh, the um, uh, Brunk sale is finishing up with the collection of Peter Tulu. And I mentioned Peter before. Um, I had gotten to know him a little bit years ago. Uh, he used to come in and out of Essex, Mass, uh, when we had a, a big shop there. And uh, he was a, a, a sort of a Renaissance guy. He knew a lot about many topics. Um, he had a he had a, a, a unbelievable uh, amount of knowledge in almost every area you could think of, from from uh, obscure bits of Americana uh, to, to 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 you know Fabergé eggs. He, he knew all of it. He weapons, Chinese art, Indian art. He was interested in everything. He was uh, uh, studious in his efforts. He has a son who's who went into the business as well. Has done well for himself. But Peter was a, 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 a he was a landmark dealer for many, 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 many years. And uh, if, you've, if you get Antiques Magazine, you'll probably recall all of his ads in there. He had ads in there all the time. He was very good, very good dealer. And uh, he had this plate. And uh, a really fine example, 18th century, Chin Lung, possibly late Yong Chen, uh, ended up uh, selling for uh, $650. It was a 15-inch charger. It was a nice plate. I think that was a very fair buy. Very fair for a 15-inch model. All right, and then uh, this is, is this Revere? Revere Auctions um, had their sale. I had a number of inquiries on the identification assistant uh, uh, service on the site um, about these and some other things. And um, I think one of you probably bought these. Um, I think, maybe not. Uh, I thought they were great. Uh, and they went for $650 plus the premium, so around 800 all in, uh, but a pair. And you don't get pears very often. Uh, pears of uh, uh, 18th century teapots are sort of unusual. And these were really nice and uh, beautifully decorated. Really, really beautiful. They'll be slightly different. They're not, they're, they're, you'll notice like, uh, for example, on this one, this flower is a bit different than this flower. But they're, they're very complementary to one another. And uh, uh, nice looking porcelain, $650. And then over to this, this was that punch bowl, 10 inch punch bowl. I had several inquiries about this uh, in the Chinese taste, 10 inches in diameter, looked to be in wonderful condition. Uh, the enamels were good, the uh, gilding around the, this, these arrow spear borders, um, the arrow borders were all intact. There was no wear any place and uh, nice scenes all the way through. Slight bit of orange peel on the bottom. These were later 18th century pieces, bowl rather made, probably 
probably around 1780, 85, somewhere in there. Uh, somebody picked it up for $600, which I think was extremely reasonable, um, plus the premium. So $800 all in for uh, an 18th century punch bowl in the Chinese taste in beautiful condition. Uh, what more could you ask for? And the same um, uh, uh, goes for this plate. This was at the William Bunch sale. This very nice lotus-shaped um, uh, uh, Famille Rose 18th century bowl. It was in excellent condition all the way around. You, if you look at the enamels, you don't see a lot of cuts in the enamels. Everything was in beautiful shape. There was a tiny, 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 tiny nick out of the rim right up there. But that was it as far as I could see. I couldn't see anything else wrong with it. They mentioned that nick in the description, but it, it had no impact on the value as far as I'm concerned. That's a, that's a very, very minor thing. Uh, but overall, the, the plate looked to be in nice shape and uh, ended up going for just $325 plus the premium. So roughly $400 all done, not bad. And then this, uh, I had mentioned these photographs a few weeks ago in a couple of videos uh, because I think Chinese photography is a real coming thing. Uh, these were done in the 1960s, but the uh, photography has been of enormous interest in, in China since the, uh, since the late 19th century. There were a number of good Chinese photography studios set up. Um, uh, it, it was interesting because some very good Chinese photographers also came to the West Coast um, um, during the uh, early part of the 20th century uh, and set up photo studios and, and, and did what other photographers did, but did them in their own style. But the great part about Chinese photography is that uh, so much of it looks like uh, uh, Chinese paintings. And they, they, it's remarkable how they do it. It's extremely artistic. Um, uh, if you, you know, you, you see photographs and they say, well, it's very artistic photograph. Um, some of them are, some of them aren't. But these are, these are genuinely done like paintings. Um, and this one is very, very interesting. Um, it, the photographer's name was Qin San Long. And um, he, were, he was born in 1892. He died in 1995. And he did these photos in uh, 1963. And he was a, fa a friend of Zheng Daquan, the, the famous painter. And he asked him if he would pose in the picture. And there he is, there's his face. And uh, that is Zheng Daquan. And he posed in the picture um, for the photographer. Uh, and this is a silver uh, uh, gelatin print, uh, which is the best you could get. That's what you want. You want silver gelatin. And you get all the details like this in silver gelatin prints. They, get, they were a, a, a very early on, they've been around for 100 years. Um, doing this process, but they were able to, you were, photographers were able to produce incredibly detailed photos um, that look like this. Just absolutely terrific. And uh, this one went for 5,500, uh, of course, plus the premium. Uh, but it, it just shows you how much uh, paintings of uh, uh, Chinese photography has, has really developed a following. Uh, and then there's this one by the same photographer. Um, and, you know, the, 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 the comparison to uh, the similarities between these and traditional Chinese paintings of ink paintings of mountain scenes, Sung paintings, and that kind of thing um, is right here. Uh, lots of detail. I love the figure uh, hauling the cart. Uh, with somebody in it coming down the steps and uh, like a taxi service and uh, this beautiful mountain with all the details of all the rocks and trees and bushes and then disappearing into the mist just the way they did them in paintings uh, went for $2,500 um, wonderful picture wonderful picture and then this one this was these are some of my, my, my well, I think my favorite was the previous one but this is also a really lovely example very three-dimensional um, very painterly in its execution uh, terrific use of light and with this very great gnarly old burly looking tree uh, right here that's a very old tree my god and um, ended up going for about twenty six hundred dollars Okay, and then over here, it's interesting how far these have come. But if you're out there looking around, I'm going to go back to this just for a second. If you're out there hunting around for objects, keep your eyes out for Chinese photographs like this that are silver bromide, silver, silver gelatin printed uh, pictures. They're fairly large. They're fairly good size uh, most of the time. Uh, this one was, uh, do they give the dimensions? Um, yeah, 13 by 11, 10 inches. 
All right, and uh, this one was matted and so forth, which made it larger, but uh, 10 by 13 inches. That's how big they are. If you go into antique shops that look like they have decent things, ask them if they ever come across old Chinese photographs. Um, uh, uh, Japanese photographs are okay, but the Chinese photographs, I think, are um, gr grossly undervalued and can be found out there. There are people that have them. And uh, every once in a while, one of the, they turn up. And I think half the time they don't turn up at auctions because uh, auctioneers, when they go out to houses, don't think they're worth much. And I think that's part of the problem. But uh, a, a number of years ago, I was in central Massachusetts and I bought a, 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 a folio of photographs by a, a fairly well-known Hong Kong photographer. I bought 50 of them and um, they sold them to me I, I paid, at the auction. I think I paid $4 a piece for them. And uh, the cheapest one went for around $1,100 when I sold them um, uh, at auction. Uh, and and uh, I think we sold some of them on eBay and they brought anywhere from 1000 to $5,000 a piece. Uh, it was a very, very good auction. <laughs> I was pretty pleased with that. But uh, it was illustrative photography where I thought they'd bring more. I have to admit, I, I don't think that was, the, I think that was an anomaly, um, what they what I bought them for, because I, I thought I'd end up paying four or 5000 for them. And, um, you know, $100 a piece, $200 a piece, somewhere in there. And uh, not even close, $4 each. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, it was a great auction. <laughs> and uh, then over here, uh, this was uh, a more of the Peter Tulu collection. He had some Chinese paintings, uh, watercolors. He had a bunch of them uh, at, uh, at Bronx. And uh, these are some of them. These are really, really fine, uh, nicely done watercolors, all framed, ready to go. And uh, somebody picked them up for $6,500, about $2,000 a piece. Um, with the premium, it'll be a little bit more, uh, but very finely painted. And these are good size. They were 16 by 21 inches, uh, you know, full sheets, uh, but lovely quality, lovely quality. And then over to the clock, the clock sold. Uh, I've been talking about this clock for a while because I thought it was wonderful. And I thought the estimate was low. Uh, these clocks are extremely rare. They were, this clock was probably made around the, the porcelain part of it was probably made about 1840. Um, the works uh, could very well be Chinese, um, uh, they didn't say, but the, the workmanship on the porcelain is excellent. And I've only seen a few of these over the years, There's a few of them in museums, and um, I came across one that was done in the Nanking pattern in a, uh, a house uh, a number of years ago in Boston. Uh, that we did on an appraisal it never came up for sale. It got passed down to a grandson, which is great. I, I'd, I'd want to keep it too if it was in my family. Uh, but this was a, a beautiful clock and uh, all said and done with the buyer's premium it probably came in at around $8,000, but very, very rare, very rare. And uh, this was also, uh, I think, at the same auction. It was um, Able Auctions out in California. What are they, in Los Angeles? Uh, had this uh, very nice fan. It had originally been sold by Christie's back in the 80s. Um, um, uh, you know, Hong scenes of um, um, probably Hong Kong. And uh, nice lacquer work down at the bottom. The blades looked to be in good shape. Overall, it looked fine. And uh, I don't think it brought too much money. I think this was a pretty reasonable buy because if you think about it, in the past we've had them, we've seen them on eBay, and they bring 2,200, 2,400 sometimes in this style. Uh, this one brought $1,400. Not bad, not bad at all. All right, and then. Uh, Get the screen to change. We come over to this. Uh, this didn't sell, and I, I, I left it in here because if, if, if any of you are um, um, early Canton uh, collectors, you might want to look into this and see if it's available post-sale. Um, I don't see anything wrong with it. It looks like a very nice example. Um, beautiful quality all the way around the arrow. It's got this very, very fine arrow border, which is the best indicator when you, they really look like spears. Um, those are the best ones. The later ones, they just uh, they sort of broke down the spears and turned them into groups of dots, um, little little repeated repeats of dots. This wasn't the case here. This was all arrows, all spearheads. Very nice quality. Um, didn't didn't sell. Um, don't know why. Had an opening bid of just four hundred and fifty dollars. It was eleven inches tall, fourteen inches wide. It's a big one. Um, and maybe you could call some one of you could call Able Auctions if you're interested and ask them if there's a post sale price for it because um, you could probably pick it up for around four or five hundred dollars, which would be a pretty good buy, I think. All right, and then over here to this, this was that Christie sale I was telling you about. They had all the great um, uh, uh, rank badges. 
Uh, and this is a very nice thing. If you're into rank badges, do yourself a favor and come over here and copy these photographs. Uh, because these some of these are, are nice early ones. Uh, there's a pair here from the Yongchen period we're going to look at in a minute. And uh, some other ones that are all from the 19th century or Qinlung period. These are old rank badges. Zhenfeng to Tongxi period, Daoquan period, Qinlung period, Jiajing to Tongxi period. All right, and then um, uh, Daoguan, Daoguan, Jiajing. So lots, lots of uh, 18th and late early 19th century badges. Um, but but save the pictures. These are, are, are invaluable if you're if you're getting interested in, in, in Chinese silk and Chinese rank badges. All right, so check them out. All right, and we're going to get to the prices on them, a few of them in a minute. I just want to go over some other things that were in this sale that I think were fabulous buys. This was one of the great buys of the week, I think, on Christie's. Um, this was a, a 15 inch, 16 and a quarter inch tall transitional period jar with this big uh, 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 Kirin on it. Uh, wonderfully done. I couldn't find out why it went for so little money because transitional wares, as we've been seeing over the last uh, couple of years, tr transitional and Chongshen wares have been getting a lot of traction in the market. This one, I don't know what happened. I thought this would bring, um, uh, in this size, uh, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, something like that, um, at least. And it brought close to that. It brought eleven thousand nine hundred seventy, but um, about thirty percent under what I thought it would bring. Uh, it was estimated very reasonably, seven to nine thousand. So the, the the winning buyer wasn't you know pushing against a reserve at that point. Uh, I think it just it was just one of those things where it went cheap. And uh, the, bravo, uh, one of you got it because that was a very nice jar. And these are a good buy, $1,000 for a pair of Liao uh, white glazed pottery uh, 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 flasks. Um, uh, that one, one of them had a little repair uh, up at the top here. You can see it. It was just just sort of knocked off and glued back on. You can get that if you bought the if any of you bought these, you can get that cleaned up for, for about, about 75 bucks. And there's a chip there that they could reglaze if you want it. I wouldn't bother. Uh, but other than that, they look pretty nice. And uh, somebody picked them up for $1,000 for the pair. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. And uh, this is one of the rank badges. I'm going to show you. We'll talk about a couple of them. Uh, these were very, very nice. Yongshen period. Unusual color um, with, this, with this tan, soft tan, goldish ground. Uh, really, really nice. In good condition. Uh, and as I said, Yongshen period, so made around 1730. Um, but they looked to have been beautifully preserved. Uh, a couple of spots I noticed they did a little bit of, maybe a little bit of emergency stitching along the inside uh, seam, which is fine. It stabilizes it, doesn't do any harm. Uh, but I didn't see any damage or staining or anything on them that would, uh, would impact the value. Uh, sometimes you'll have uh, uh, silks like this will have a pulled thread and they'll be hanging off like a loop and uh, a, g a good a good uh, restorer can pull that thread back into line and, and, and make it uh, uh, look the way it should. It's not a big deal to do. And then there was this lot that went for $32,760 uh, Peking knot badges, uh, beautifully done. There's a pair at the bottom and and two 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 separate types up above and all of them were wonderful this was why the lot did so much i was kind of surprised they sold them as a lot but uh, this one is all blind stitched to the bottom with this foo lion standing on a rocky outcropping and uh, repeated over here with a slightly different color coloration that was it and they have all these little buddhist uh, swastikas running around the border and then you have this one with another foo lion standing on a rock um, I think, what are these, second, second, third rank civilian badges? I forget. There's a, there's, anyway, um, I, I always have to keep that list in front of me. It reminds me of which is which. But uh, notice the colors are so good. The soft pink, that pink, hasn't faded. And, and that's one of the first colors to, to fade. Um, uh, uh, pinks and yellows um, fade the easiest on uh, Chinese silks, it seems. Uh, but these these were beautiful, obviously well kept, and then this one is sort of dazzling. It's uh, it's got this chicken skin sort of uh, textured ground, uh, wonderful colors, fl flowers and vines going in all directions, but unusual coloration, very nice strong colors still all over it. Um, but in all all in all, this is a really nice lot, and uh, thirty two thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars. 
All right, and then over to this. This was this one brought thirteen thousand on its own, but a uh, very very nice chin lung example. Uh, there we go. Let's blow it up. Wham! There it goes. And notice that the the colors are, are still the shading from a deeper red to a light red are all still very obvious. Again, hasn't been in the sun. Notice the yellow is still all intact there. Hasn't been in any sun or any light. It's probably been kept in a drawer for a long time. Uh, really nice example. And um, let's see here. There we go. Um, there we go. Close this one up. Computer's jumping around all. There we go. $13,860 against a $2,500 to $3,500 estimate. That's the way it goes. All right, and then over here to this, what happened on eBay this week. Uh, this is pretty good. This was, an, uh, again, getting back to photography. Um, um, this was done by a studio photographer that did move to San Francisco from China. Uh, uh, Wai Chen uh, Chu Him, and uh, he had a studio, and this was a Chinese servant that he had photographed for somebody. Uh, some sort of house servant, probably. Uh, nicely dressed in this, in this little studio scene that they used to do with the backdrops and all that. Uh, but interesting, uh, interesting bit of culture done around 1890, I guess, and uh, ended up selling for $676. This isn't a big photo. This is, these are small. These are these little uh, viewers, view cards. Um, he didn't even put the size in. It's probably, uh, what, how big are those? Four, four by six inches, something like that. Uh, but very nicely done. And then over here to this, the bronze. Uh, this was from Lion Goods, who's a seller out in Minnesota had this. I think they had a couple of bronzes, as a matter of fact. There was this one. Um, uh, they, he dated it either Yuan or Ming. I think it's probably more likely Ming, judging by the style and shape and the patina on it. But it's got this nice archaistic dowdy mask on it and these flange handles coming off the side. Uh, very attractive, $787. Um, how big was this? Five and a half inches tall. Not a big bronze, but it, it brought a very decent price. And the next one was, uh, I think it's the next one, it was another small bronze he had. It was actually smaller. It was three and a quarter inches or so. We talked about it last week because I liked it so much. That it was a really a gem of a little bronze, undisturbed patina. Um, here it has that gummy sort of brown surface that bronzes pick up just from being in the air and smoke and, and, and pollutants and all that and oil on your hands from being handled by you know hundreds and thousands of times um, nice little bronze nice little bud vase for if you have scholars objects this would be perfect to put on on a table with scholars objects sold for eight hundred and eighteen dollars all right, and then over here, um, a very good 18th century armorial teapot. Had a repair to the handle down here. Had a repair here and a repair here. It looks like the handle probably got knocked off the way they often do. But beautiful um, armorial enamel work on here in, in, in very good condition. And the gilding was all in good condition up here. So the, the teapot had been really well taken care of until somebody... Somebody smashed it and broke the handle off of it, which happens used to happen a lot with these. Um, and uh, anyway, it went for, it still went for two hundred and eighty five dollars, which is a very fair price for that. And then this this was an interesting lot. I'm throwing I threw in this this week because um, uh, this this was sort of fun. It was a, a lot of uh, five pieces: teapot, big bowl, two waste bowls, and a cup. Um, and basically the, in the same pattern, very, very similar um, in many ways. The floral patterns are very similar. I don't think they're all from the same service. I just think that they, whoever bought these and, and collected them did it because it had this, this very similar floral patterns. Uh, and they're, they're not, not, these pieces weren't all perfect. Um, some of them had repairs, they had nicks and so forth. But uh, to, to, to buy a, a number of pieces uh, from the 18th century, that um, uh, have a few rough edges to them for 220 bucks that you can study and learn from and feel and enjoy because a lot of a lot of what you learn about dating and authenticating porcelain is also by touch by handling by seeing them up close seeing them in different lights and here you have five examples and you could study the heck out of them and, and you get a little class for yourself for two under 250 under 230 dollars uh, we went for 227 plus uh, 25 bucks in shipping. There you go. So, 252 dollars and 50 cents shipped.
to, to where I am um, in Massachusetts from Connecticut. All right, not bad. And then this, this Chinese embroidered uh, skirt, uh, they dated it as 19th century. I, th I think it's either 19th or Republic, probably. Uh, but the colors were nice. And um, uh, it looks very much like the silks that were shipped to the uh, straights community. Um, I'm not sure if it's straight, a straight skirt or not, tip, you know, meant for them specifically. But these, the bright pink edging and the gold ground and this green, the festive, uh, colorful aspect of it makes me think uh, possibly uh, a straight straights uh, community um, or, or that taste anyway certainly uh, there it is beautifully done really nice silk and I think this went reasonably um, $370 we've seen these silks on the past bring four or five six hundred this one was pretty and it was in beautiful shape and that, and that that goes a long way around me. <laughs> All right, and now uh, this, the uh, 19th century uh, uh, embroidered panel. It was 29 by 39 inches, roughly. It was a pretty good size piece. Uh, it had, uh, I think, overall quite good condition. Uh, the, the guy that bought it actually uh, contacted me after he bought it. I had it on the newsletter page last week. Um, that the, the winning bidder got a hold of me and asked me what I thought of it. And I reminded him, I said, we put it on the newsletter page because I thought it was terrific. And I did think it would bring six or eight hundred dollars. And I think this is just one of these cases where not everything brings what it should all the time. This one went for a little over 300, 320 or so. But it was in nice shape, nice apricot ground. He's getting it framed. And uh, like I always say with silks, get them framed, hang them. Just make sure you never hang them in a room where direct sunlight coming through a window is ever going to land on it because it will fade it. It'll fade it in a matter of months. And um, the, the yellows and uh, certain colors, the reds, are particularly susceptible to fading in the sun, and you don't want that to happen. All right, you, you, you don't, you know, this stuff is, you're only owning it for a few years, you know. It's, hopefully, it'll, this will be around another 200 years, so, you know, take care of them like you're carrying them for your future great-grandkids or something. All right, it went for $321. Not bad, not bad at all. And uh, that was a, a pile of junk that was... Um, I was looking at earlier and um, let me see here we'll get the page to change there we go uh, this is the last item and I wanted to talk about this because uh, uh, this is uh, the seller has it listed I think he called it um, he just a little mis misunderstanding of what it is he called it Grisai landscape it's not Grisai it's Quan John and if you, any of you out there buy Quan John uh, porcelains are interested in this subject this, this one is broken. This one has a break to it uh, uh, right here. Pretty bad, uh, badly repaired break. Uh, but this is a nice 19th century, possibly early Republic, but I think it's probably 19th century. Quan Zhang uh, wear brush pot. Uh, uh, a beautifully done, uh, rare type. And if these things interest you and you're not in a position to buy them, you know, that they go for thousands and thousands of dollars, uh, you might look at this and then um, leave it as is and maybe get that break cleaned up at some point when you've got a few extra bucks and you'll have a gem on your hands. Get, get a really good restorer, though, to do it for you. Don't, don't, don't do it on the cheap. Um, much of this, by the way, this, this, this brown, this, this yellowing that's here that's showing up uh, where the glue was, um, a lot of times uh, that'll come off with just wiping it down with some acetone or fingernail polish remover or something like that to clean it up a little bit. But this is a beautiful, beautiful brush pot. Um, and as you know, some of these Quan John brush pots in the past, uh, there was a pair that had been on eBay at one point. Some of you will remember this a few years ago, five years ago, maybe. And uh, uh, there was a guy in England had it and he put them on. They were by a famous uh, uh, artist uh, done in the 19th century. And they got up to around, um, I don't know, up thousands and thousands of dollars almost immediately. And he started getting crazy offers. So he pulled them, he put them at Christie's and they ended up bringing 380,000, as I recall, or somewhere around there or 400,000. It was a lot of money. And, uh, but th this is a, these are, this is a lovely looking brush pot and it deserves a better home and deserves a new home. So if one of you like taking in orphans that aren't perfect, uh, you might consider this. All righty. And that's about it for the week. All right. There's a fair bit going on. Thanks for watching. We'll be back Monday. We're going to be doing the, we're putting together the information for the post auction results from New York. And we're going to try and get a video out also um, for the upcoming sales in Hong Kong, which are just at the end of next week. It really came on fast. I, I kind of got behind. Um, and um, uh, we, we want to share that with you because there's a number of good sales. 
um, uh, coming up. And uh, you you want it? You don't want to miss them. Uh, some really really nice auctions coming up over there. Some unbelievable rarities, unbelievable. So uh, check that out. All right. And if you haven't subscribed to us yet at YouTube, please do check out the other video we just put up. And have a great weekend. Everybody have a great weekend. All right. Um, uh, it's nice here. What is it now? It's it's in the mid 50s today. Sunny. No wind off the ocean with the uh, the hurricane that went by last week went right off the coast here. We had wild back winds um, last Friday and Saturday. When I was doing the recording on Friday out here, I was looking out. The, we have a big window at the end of this room, and the trees from the ocean were just bending away from the water with the with the backwash winds from that uh, the rotation from the hurricane that was going up heading on, on its way to Nova Scotia. Uh, we, we, we get the backside of those. We had some huge waves. The surface were all out. It was really something. And um, now here I am. All right. Well, listen, have a great time um, with your family this weekend. And um, if you're out picking, good luck. And uh, be back next week. All right. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.